Okay. Better off. Okay. Good start. Uh, so um, the work that um, I'm going to talk about uh, here is uh, it's related to uh, what uh, we just present in the sense that uh, is an effort uh, to construct models to improve EGLRs that are uh, based on physical principles instead of just using statistical tools that uh, uh, certain both methods, but uh, some, uh, sometimes it's difficult from the outcomes of the analysis, you have a clear idea, you account for what is going on in, inside the brain. So um, this uh, uh, work goes in this direction. So, uh, so it's about uh, EEG recognition. Mark talked uh, about uh, EEG recognition and uh, re, uh, again. Uh, the process that I'm going to use is very simple. Instead of uh, so you report EEG, when you report EEG, what you have is a distribution of voltage on the skull. And uh, you want to use this signal, this data, to estimate uh, the distribution of the electric field. And instead of uh, process the, uh, the raw data, now I'm going to process uh, the electric field. Why? So I, I want to convince you guys that this is a good deal. And uh, if you're not able to convince me, then I go to show results of empirical data, which uh, I think is more convincible. Um, so uh, this work is in collaboration with Marcus, Acasio, and Pat, of course. So first, let me tell a little bit. Uh, I know that uh, Marcus used this picture, seeing that. So <laughs> but let me tell you a little bit about uh, EEG signals and uh, some issues that uh, I want to address by computer by estimating the electric field. So uh, here is a picture that was taken in our lab some time ago. So uh, you see uh, Michelle uh, preparing Logan um, for EEG studs. So Logan is wearing an uh, electrode uh, net. I will see several nodes in this net. Each node corresponds to a sensor. And uh, these sensors record a voltage difference uh, with respect to a, a, a reference site. Okay? So in this case, for this system, the reference is located in the ver vertex, which is on top of the head. So um, um, our studs in general, um, you know, the subject uh, is in, in front of a computer, uh, not exactly in this room, just, just for the preparation. So we have a, a, a room which uh, with uh, out resolution in a dark environment. And uh, the uh, subject sit in front of the computer, and uh, he presents several images or uh, some speech sounds, which are called the stimulus. And uh, you do you run several trials. Trials in general last about one second, and the stimulus presentation is is about uh, what, 300 milliseconds or 200 milliseconds. Um, and this signal is required uh, at sample rates of uh, one kilohertz. You can go beyond that, but uh, usually you don't gain too much by using more data, because this means that you're going to use more data. You know, in this case, here you have 128 sensors. So you can see 186 sensors and 1,000 points per second. So um, it's a lot of things. So there are several uh, uh, techniques to analyze EEG. Uh, uh, what you are going to talk about is the classification or recognition of signals. And some experimental issues with EEG. First of all, um, the reference electrode. So um, sometimes you put the reference in the year. So uh, in this system, the reference is on top of the head. So uh, there's no silent uh, site to put this, this, the reference electrode. So wherever you put it, you're going to uh, have a bias due to the reference. Okay? Uh, this, in some amounts, is not a uh, uh, big issue. But if you want to do a spatial analysis, then that matters. Because uh, imagine, for example, that you, 
you choose for the reference site the site exactly where the, uh, the zero is linear to base, then the, 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 you got the zero in that site. But not going to see anything there. Um, another thing is that um, EG has a low signal to noise ratio, ratio uh, and a poor spatial resolution. Okay? So at least these two uh, uh, problems here you can address with the technique that I'm going to present here. Uh, Noise problem is uh, you have always in the there are some um, signal processing techniques that you can do to improve the signal. So um, let's talk about a little bit uh, why the potential sometimes is not the best uh, quantity to take into account when you want to uh, infer about brain brain function. So first of all, uh, when you record EG. You, you don't see from EEG uh, ac action potential, for example. EEG is not about what's going on inside the cell, but outside the cell. It's about what's going on in the extracellular medium. Okay? So um, usually you uh, model the cells by electrical dipole, like that. And um, it's all important that EEG is not sensitive to activation of just one neuron, one cell. So uh, the activation of one neuron, one cell generates a very weak signal. So what you take with EEG is uh, the result of the uh, synchronization of thousands of millions of neurons. So <clears throat> you are picking uh, activity of layers of main cortical neurons uh, that have similar spatial orientation. So if the, the, the dipoles are random oriented, then this signal in general you not produce something uh, significant in this column. And uh, most of these is, uh, layers, we believe that we report are the pyramidal cells, where the, the, the cells are um, oriented in the same, same directions. And the other thing that is important to mention is volume conduction. So when uh, a cell activates, uh, what happens is that it's going to uh, push out ions of like charge. So uh, these ions, you move away from the cell, and when they move, they push their neighbors, and, uh, and so on. So this generates a current that uh, ends up in the skull, and uh, these ions you also interact with uh, in the electrode. So, we, and then you're going to, to see a voltage difference between uh, the, this electrode and the reference. So, but that means that the potential is a coarse quantity. It doesn't give you information about direction from where the current is, is coming, from where it's going. So, <clears throat> and this is uh, also showed that uh, in some cases you can classify EG signal with 100% accuracy, but not always. Yeah, so there are many limitations with EG. Uh, but you can see that some of them use some um, physical principle. So I'm going to talk about the electric field. Uh, just to simplify the discussion, Pat doesn't like this in my simplification in general, but uh, I assume here, let's assume that the, the brain is a perfect sphere, okay? And the head is made of three spherical layers, the brain, the skull, and the skull. Okay, this will simplify the discussion. And um, <clears throat> the brain, every time that the brain activates, it generates a left and magnetic field. But these fields are not coupled or they are weakly coupled. So the dynamic of the magnetic field does not interfere in the dynamic of the left field and vice versa. Okay? Uh, and also, most of currents in the brain are ohmic currents. You don't have uh, capacitive effects in general are negligible. So with these things taken into account, the electric field is proportional to the current density. 
to the density of per current per uh, uh, area unit. Okay, and this constant here is uh, what you call the electroconductivity. So you, you, you don't have actually to assume that uh, the brain is isotropic. You can, uh, for example, afford that uh, the uh, conductive along the tangential direction, remember that we're talking about the sphere now, is not the same as in the radial direction. Uh, this is, is okay. But uh, when you analyze uh, this equation here, you're going to find that at, um, in the air scalp interface, exactly where you measure EG, in the outer scalp interface, the radial component of the electric field is zero. So the scalp electric field is a tangential field. Uh, this is important because it means that I can fully estimate the electric field from the scalp distribution. Otherwise, I would, that would not be possible because the electric field is related to the, to the potential. Uh, the, According to the question, we have to apply the, uh, the gradient. The gradient of the potential gives the left field. So the left, each component of the left field measures the uh, range of change of the potential in that direction. So to estimate uh, the radio component of the left field, uh, I need some measure of the potential along the radio direction, and I don't have that. You know? You want to know the, the, uh, the potential along the scalp surface. So uh, this is good. This is an uh, important uh, property. And that also that uh, the left field is directly connected to the, to the current density. You don't have such relation for the potential. You can establish a, a relationship between the potential and, and, and the dipoles. But this involves a green function, an integral, over uh, uh, the whole sphere, and uh, that means that uh, the potential is really important constant. So, but so, but if you do the analysis only using the left field, then there's a problem. Okay, that the component, the radio component of the left field, is zero on the scalp surface, but it's not zero inside the scalp. So if you, if you do an ask, use on the scalp left field, you'll not be able to pick, for example, currents that are uh, generated by radio dipoles. So what I'm going to do, so let's go to the next slide. <coughs> so sorry. Um, what uh, we're going to do, our method is a combination of the left field and the surface of plasma. And uh, we we'll talked about this, these two methods before. So uh, why the surface of plasma? The surface of plasma of the potential is the divergence of the left field. What happened, and I can demonstrate that, uh, I didn't put the equations here, but it is something that you can derive theoretically and analytically, is that uh, the, uh, if the, Although the, the, the potential uh, acts like a, a low pass filter for brain signals, the surface of plasma acts, uh, acts like a high pass filter. So it is a very good quantity to pick local activation. And here is a, is a clear example of what I'm saying. So um, this is a, a simulation study. Uh, we need to have three dipoles. One has uh, opposite uh, orientation, it's oriented opposite to the other two. And uh, this is what they have at the brain, the brain surface, along the brain surface. If you go to the scalp, what you see is a blue picture of this map. Because of volume conduction and because of the scalp, which is a very poor conductor. Okay? But if I can put the Laplace, you see, my signal, what they have, is highly correlated to what they see in the brain surface. Because this is true for radio dipoles, for dipoles that are oriented along the radial direction. So then the idea is, well, let's combine the left field with the Laplacian, because the left field 
you will pick a tangential activity, the occurrence that flow uh, many tangential 